Hey what's up guys and welcome back to another video in the studio. Today we're talking about PC fans as this is something I've wanted to talk about for a while. There are loads of new fans coming out. Corsair have released their ML series and this is their ML Pro for magnetic levitation fans and they market them as these high-end premium fans, but do they actually make any difference to your PC? And of course, it's not just Corsair, you've got a wide selection of fans, you've got Be Quiet selection of silence optimized fans, you've got Noxua going for a pre very premium uh, end of the market, and is it actually worth investing in some of these fans? Is it worth exploring getting better fans, or should you just not care about them at all? Well. Before we can answer that, we need to actually look at what fans do. And obviously they cool your PC. They sit on your case and they bring cool air in and exhaust hot air out. And depending on the way you configured your case, you're probably bringing cool air in from the bottom and then venting it up the top, as this is in theory the most efficient way of doing this as heat naturally rises. And of course, the more fans that you have in your PC, then the more air will be moved from place to place. But depending on the case, this, is, this isn't always the case as some cases will be more restrictive and depending on the cable management you do and as all of these things, they all play an important factor on your case and thus on the fans cooling in your case. Now, the different sorts of fans are pretty simple. You've got different sizes, the most common being 120 mm and 140 mm. If you go for a radiator in a water cooling setup, then these can be larger. You can have a 280 mm rad, you can have a 360 mm millimeter rad and there's all these different combinations but fans themselves they have two different sorts of varieties if you like you have airflow optimized fans and then static pressure optimized fans airflow fans are all about pushing the most air possible from one place to the next they're all about high volume high speed just getting air from A to B. And these work best in places that are unrestricted. So as an exhaust on your case is a good example of this as you've probably not got anything blocking that fan and it can literally chuck all of the air out from your case inside to the air outside. Static pressure fans on the other hand are optimized for static pressure. So the amount of pressure that these, air, that these fans can actually push through the fan. And these are the most optimized for cases or areas within your case that are directly blocked. So if you have a case like the Fantex, uh, Eclipse for example, or if you have a, any sort of case where you've got a front grill on it and then you've got a fan in front of it and then they sort of bring the air in from the outside, then these are going to be where you're going to want to use static pressure fans. And more and more cases are doing this. So just to name a few, you've got Corsair's uh, 600C, you've got Fantex P400S, and then of course uh, their Evolve ATX, and just loads of cases, pretty much all premium cases these days are going for that design, rather than the old school way of having mesh at the front of your case, and then just bringing a large amount of cooling and air into your PC. But of course, fans aren't all made equal. You get varying quality of fans. Some are made on the cheap, and some are made for more of the luxury side of things. And the sort of fans you've got at the moment probably depends on the case you bought. If you buy a cheap case, you're probably gonna get some cheap, nasty fans and you're not gonna get very many. But if you step up and you buy a premium case, then you are going to get better quality fans. But the best quality fans are normally reserved for the people that want to go out and buy a premium fan. And the ones that all kickstarted this video are these ones here. Not these ones, these are the stock ones, but these, which are Corsair's ML120 Pro or 140 Pro LED, depending on the range you go for. These are magnetic levitation fans and the bearing that's actually in the middle of these are an electromagnet. And then when the fan spins round, it essentially gives you less friction and you get lower noise. Because if you look at a fan, then you will notice that the center of the fan, there is a bearing in here. You can't really see it, but depending on the quality of this bearing, the longer the fan will last and the amount of noise that you'll get from the fan. And the motor within the fan also makes a big, a big amount of difference and the design of the fan. And all of these things add up to a fan that can make a large amount of noise or a small amount of noise. And then depending on the way you mount it, and then again, depending on the quality of the fan, you can get a large amount of vibration going into your case, which is almost annoying the noise itself because it just makes this horrible rattling noise. It's not as bad as hard drives, but it's definitely something to consider if you're getting rattle from your case. It might be worth looking at mounting your fans differently or getting some higher quality fans. So it should come as no surprise that spending more money on a fan is going to give you better performance. But 
Performance, what does that actually mean? Well, you're going to get better cooling performance because you're going to move a larger amount of air and it's going to do it more quietly so you're going to have a quieter running system. Both of those things, whether it makes that much difference and whether you're actually going to see any performance increase in your PC, probably not. But the quiet element for me is very important. But there is, of course, the aesthetic element, as if you go for a fan that has LEDs, then you are going to get uh, some extra visual effects in your PC. And you, also, you can also get fans now going forward that have RGB customizability, so you can have cool fan effects. Some of them absolutely stupid, some of them are a li little bit more tame, and you might actually be able to get a system that looks a little bit unique. But the most important thing for me isn't really the fans you have themselves, I'd definitely say there are th such things as crap fans, and if you buy a really cheap, nasty case, you're definitely going to get crap fans. So if you do have a case with crap fans, it's probably worth looking at upgrading them. But it doesn't matter what fans you have. The most important thing that I can say is that you want to get fans that are PWM. These four-pin pan, these four-pin pans, these four-pin fans. Uh, can actually be customized uh, with their fan speed. You can plug them into a fan controller on your case, but the thing I would always recommend doing is getting a motherboard that has motherboard fan speed control. And this means that you can now actually plug your fan into your motherboard, uh, the header goes onto the fan headers, and then your system will then automatically, automatically decide uh, the amount of fan speed that you need depending on the situation. As there is nothing worse than trying to watch a Blu-ray movie on your PC and having fans running at full blast. These days there is no point in having your fans directly connected to a Molex connector or just having them running at full speed. Even under max load it's very rare that you're going to need to do this unless you are rendering a video and everything is getting very toasty. But it's not just motherboards that have this functionality as you can also Grab something like this, which is the RX uh, on RX uh, 460. It's the Strix edition, and it actually has some fan headers on the GPU as well. This is a fairly new feature that is coming into some graphics cards. I know all of the Strix graphics cards have them, and I'm not, sh I'm not sure if any others have them. But now you can actually change your fan speed depending on your GPU temperature and your G GPU will decide it rather than your motherboard, which is pretty cool. But regardless of whether you go for something like this or whether you plug them into your motherboard, the system itself is fairly easy to use. You just need to grab some software. The one I'm showing you here is uh, the Asus AI Suites, where automatically uh, at the touch of a button you can press configure your fans, optimize your fans, and it will then run all your fans independently and find the best fan speed and set a fan curve. But you can then go in and customize your fan curve. So if you want your system to run a little bit hotter and a little bit quieter, you can do that. Or if you don't mind the noise, you can have your fans running at a higher speed. But the important thing is the curve because the curve is going to have your fans running quieter when you don't need the extra performance. And then when your stuff gets a little bit hotter, then your fans are going to come on and they're going to run better. And this is definitely one of the best and probably most important optimization you can do, no matter what PC you have, because as someone that didn't really do this before, I know how much of a big difference it makes to actually have a system that is configured to run quietly, then just not really thinking about it and just using your PC day to day without really thinking about it. But all of that stuff is all well and good, but is it actually going to make that much difference to your system? Well, if you're running a full system water-cooled loop and the only moving parts that you've got in your system are the fans, then having high quality fans are essentially going to be the limiting factor when it comes to your performance and the amount of noise that your system makes, as the more air you can pass over the radiators, then the quieter and the cooler your system is going to be. But for most people, spending a load of money on fans doesn't really make that much sense. Because while you're going to get a quieter system, it's not really going to actually make that much difference to your cooling and to your frames a second. Looking at this scientifically, having a higher quality fan should bring your temperatures down a bit inside your case, and then you could overclock your components a little bit with that offset amount of temperature. But for the most part, it's not going to make that much difference, and people don't really need to worry about it. But having some decent fans definitely makes a good amount of difference. To test this out, I grabbed my Fantex system. So this was running a P, no it wasn't, it was running a, I've forgotten the name of the case, the uh, Evolve the Evolve ATX, so the big tempered glass tower uh, that you can find the full review of over there somewhere. And at the moment this has got three stock fans in it. So one Corsair one that's running on the H90, 
and then just two system fans that are just running the system and bringing the system temperature down a bit. So replacing these with the ML Pro fans will bring the temperatures down ever so slightly, but it's not really going to make any difference. And if you're expecting to have a system that runs a lot cooler, you are going to be a little bit disappointed. But don't get me wrong, it definitely is going to make a difference, especially on radiators where your system temperature is, well, your CPU temperature or your GPU temperature or whatever it is you've got hooked up to the radiator, it is going to make the most amount of difference there. But generally speaking, water-cooled radiators that you buy, like the all-in-ones, they come with decent fans anyway, so it's not going to be a major deal if you do or don't upgrade. So, should you upgrade? Well, if you want a quieter running system and you are, have already configured your system fans with software and it's still not as quiet as you'd like, that's definitely a good time to look at some third-party fans. If you want the best cooling possible on your radiator, then upgrading your fans will make some sense. And if you're running a custom water-cooled loop, then it is essential that you use the best fans you can. But if you're assessing your system for noise, you're probably going to want to make sure that your hard drives are secure or not removed entirely and just swapped out for SSDs. If you're using a cheap power supply, then that is no doubt making a very large amount of noise. And having a power supply that has a silent or low power, low noise mode is going to make a large amount of sense really. And it's going to definitely have a look at that. Uh, because as uh, someone that swapped from a high quality power supply back to a low power supply, low, low quality power supply for testing is amazing the amount of difference the power supply makes uh, when you have a horrible noisy racket of a fan inside. But to summarize this whole video in one sentence, is it worth upgrading your PC fans? Well, while it will make an amount of difference to your PC potential, your cooling potential and the temperatures that your system runs at and the system noise, there are steps you should do before you upgrade your fans. 100% you should use some motherboard software control to make sure that your fans are running quietly when you don't need them, and then as you ramp up in temperatures, they thus come on and run more efficiently. It's worth checking your case for optimizations that can inf improve airflow. And it's definitely worth checking out the other components in your, in your system, as things like graphics cards and power supplies and hard drives are gonna make more noise than the fans in your system anyway. So it's all about optimization, and once you've done all of those steps, and if you still want fans that run quieter, then stepping up to something like the ML Pros here is going to make a lot of sense, as long as you can basically justify the expense, because upgrading your fans is very costly. But if you're doing all of that with the knowledge that it's not going to really directly actually affect the performance you have in-game, then it's definitely worth considering. So, there we go. I hope this video has been useful, hasn't been too rambly. It's been a while since we've done a video like this. If you want to see more videos like this exploring topics, then hit the like button. Uh, if you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave a comment down below, let me know what you thought and whether you always go for upgraded fans or whether you just stick to the stock ones. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Hit me up on social media, it's at PCCentric, Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, all of those good places. A massive thank you to Corsair for sponsoring the video and supplying a very, very large amount of fans. They said, how many do you want? I said three, they sent 16. So yeah, we're gonna be doing some system builds for sure. Um, and if you, yeah, I pretty much said everything. Questions, blah, 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 all of that stuff down below. Hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this. Check the little eye to see more videos that were um, of things that were featured in this review. And this review wasn't a review, I'm rambling. It's time to end. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.